Hello everybody, my name is Professor Morda to Barry from Barry's Talent Slab and welcome to Arithmetic Operation. Now, when people say arithmetic, they usually refer or refer to basic math. So, basic math refers to the four operations. So, what are these four operations? Well, number one is addition. Now, addition is when you add two quantities. Quantities? They're numbers. So, let's say I have, I don't know, let's see how many buttons I have on this calculator. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. So now that amount of numbers, that's a quantity. So that's an amount of something. So if I say had 49 apples so let's say I had 49 apples or let's say I had actually something smaller like three apples so now let's say that I take my three apples and add them to eight apples now since I've added three to eight apples how many apples will I get in total? Well, what is adding? It's just putting numbers together. So, the addition sign is used to represent adding. So, three plus eight is really just the way to say combine three with eight. And that should be easy. You just take three, you take eight, put them next to each other, boom. How many do you have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, what do you write here? You have eleven. So, three combined with four, the newer version, added to is 11. But what if we wanted something even shorter than that? Well, let's take that attitude and let's convert that into a new sign. Plus sign. Let's take that if and let's make it an equal sign. Now, in reality, in the olden days, before the equal sign was invented, people used to say is equal to until one guy in 1557 got tired of writing it repeatedly and so decided to write two parallel lines, which would represent equality. It was originally three parallel, but they changed it to two. So now, three plus eight is equal to 11. That is a combining numbers. Combine, oh goodness. Combining numbers. Let's take this we have over here, scale it down. Uh, how do we scale this down? So let's put it right over here and that's it. All right, so now what about subtraction? Now what is subtraction? Well, it's the opposite of addition. It's taking away one number from another. Away one number from the other. So, if we had, say, uh, if we had, say, 
nine boxes. And then somebody breaks into your home and steals two of them. So I'll illustrate that by drawing a little bag which he carries two of his boxes that he stole. So now, how many boxes are left now that he stole two of them? Uh, let's see. Actually, it's bad leaks, but he fixes it. So now, how many are left? How many boxes do you have left once this dirty thief takes two away from you and you had nine originally? Well, if you originally had nine, the thief took two away. And so now, let's count how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means nine minus two is seven. So nine with two taken away from it is seven. Or nine taken away, okay, nine with two taken away from it is seven. Or nine when you take two away from it is seven. So taking away one number from the other. Let's put our demonstration, size it down. Perfecto. All right, so now, we have multiplication. Multiplication also has some symbols that are used later in mathematics, like the asterisk or the ultimate dot. There's also division. So let's see multiplication first. And, well, multiplication is a bit complicated to explain. But essentially, it's just repeated addition. And the villain is splitting things into equal groups. So let's see multiplication, repeated addition. So now, let's say you have five times four. What does that mean? Well, let's say you have five. Now, multiplying it by four means that now you want to have four copies of five. What the? So multiplying it by four. What? Never mind. So let's say you have five and you want to make four clones of your five. That means that you have five times four. So now, here are your four clones of five. Now, how many rows of clones are there? Four. How many were there originally? And now, how many columns are there? Five. So, that means that you have five times four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Five times four is twenty. So it's repeated addition or forming groups a specific amount of time. So, now let's size down our demonstration, size it down a little bit more, and uh, perfect. All right. So finally, we have division, splitting things into equal groups. So, if we take, say, uh, a group of 40, that's just an arbitrary number I pick. So let's see how fast I can draw 40. Only one fifth of the way there. Uh, 
halfway there. 24, 28, 32, 36, and this should be 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by 4. Alright, that's 40 circles. And so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by 8. What does that mean? Well, I have to make 8 equal groups out of it. So does anybody see how we can make 8 equal groups? Well, if you don't, I'll show you. Let's take one group. group. Alright, we have one group. Let's take another group. A group. Bam, we have another group. Let's take the third group. group. Wow, this is working really well for us, isn't it? Let's take a fourth group. And bam, we're halfway done. A fifth group. Uh, let's size these down so it's going to be a bit easier to fit. Uh, let's bring them a bit closer to each other. Looks like a puzzle, doesn't it? And so now, let's try going from the other way around in really weird directions. So this, size it down. There we go. Now let's do this. Size it down. Oh goodness. Now we take these. Size it down. There we go. And then now we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten left. So we take five. There we go. And we have five remaining. So bam. How many are there in each group? One, two, three, four, five. 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 So now, how many are there in each group? There are five in each group. And thus we write 40 divided by 8 is 5. Essentially, Take this number, divide it into this amount of equal groups, count, uh, count the amount of circles or the amount of whatever you have in one group, and that will be your answer. So now, let's size it down. Uh, let's see. How can we bring this in here? Yeah, that should be good. Alright, so now there is one last thing. There are a few things I would like to mention before we go. So now, number one is the equal sign. Probably see it operating in the background the whole time. This equal sign is supremely important. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, for example. You spot it? There it is. It says that it's making up comparison, really. So this equal sign is saying both sides are the same. scale and you put two equal objects on it and you see they're the same so that gives you information so two and five together and seven they're the same but say we had two plus 52 then the scales would probably tip over in the favor of this. So now, um, let's see. This is the equal sign. Basically says, if both sides of 
me the things on both sides of me, they are equal. And do not fret if you see something like this. Uh, that basically just means that all three of them are equal. Because this and this are equal, this and this are equal, and since these two are equal, and these two are equal, then this must be equal as well. And the final thing I would like to show you is the commutative property. It basically says you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Some of them have the commutative property. Some of them don't. The commutative property basically says, all right, you have a statement over here, but is it true when we switch the order of the thing used to make it? So 2 times 5, what about 5 times 2? Well, that's still 10. However, let's say we take 9 minus 4. Now that's 5. But if we switch it around, do we get 5 back? No, we do not. So, this is an example. This is not commutative. And this is commutative. So, that is all we have for today. Um, wait, before we do that, let's just bring this huge, oh my god, let's bring this gargantuan guy up to the surface just so we can see how far we've come. That is a win for you. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.